Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today, we're looking at what I believe to be the best AK available on the U.S. market today, and it is an import from Zastava. Now, Zastava started off uh, in, in Yugoslavia, and the first Yugoslavian AK-type rifles came in the pre-1994 time period before the assault weapon ban uh, that was enacted. Now, we don't have access to one, so we have several photographs of some of the original M90s, and we're going to take a look at what makes those a little bit different. Now, the first thing they had was a very unique pistol grip. It was a very wide pistol grip, uh, not something that I particularly cared for, but it was very unique on the commercial rifles. Now, the rifle did come with a cold hammer forged barrel, which is awesome. However, it was not chrome plated. Now, this was stay true to the uh, Yugoslavian army. Uh, same thing with their SKSs. Uh, they did not have chrome lined barrels in there. Now, why they didn't, I have no idea, since that's pretty much a, mil a military standard. But I guess one of the more important things to notice is, is it's not an AK-47. Uh, this was not based off of any kind of uh, Soviet uh, drawings. Uh, it was basically reverse engineered. And the Yugoslavians did their own thing with it. The rifle, for all intents and purposes, has several major differences to it. The original rifles did have a night sight capability. They had two flip-ups that came up in the front up and in the back up. Um, and this is a Stava rifle we have here, the ZPAP. You don't have those uh, those tabs on there because it doesn't come with it. You also notice we do have a longer handguard. Uh, this is the three slot. Uh, usually you will see a two slot for the standard AKs, but it's just a little bit longer, giving you a little bit more of a perch on there. Probably the most important difference is on here, and probably the one that I like the most, is the receiver. This is a 1.5 millimeter stamped sheet metal receiver, very similar to that of the RPK with, it, with a bulged uh, trunnion. This adds a significant amount of durability to the rifle. Uh, this is probably the only company that has ever really done this uh, on the standard AKs. However, uh, the, the Iraqi military, when they did their uh, Tabuk, they, did cap they basically copied the Yugoslavian rifle. Another very unique feature of them was the fact that they had the uh, button that was placed on the back here that you were, you pushed in for disassembly of, of the receiver cover. We'll take a more of a look at that when we uh, take take this rifle apart. But what this basically does is you push the recoil spring in and push that button. It holds it in place so you can easily disassemble uh, the receiver. But it was more important, the fact that it was designed for use with grenade launchers. The U.S. Lightning Army was very interested in using grenade launchers, and they did have a gas cutoff uh, sight that was on the front that was on the previous rifles and did have a big rubber butt pad on here. So it would work properly with grenade launchers by having this lock on here, it prevented uh, the receiver cover from coming loose or coming off when firing the grenade launcher. Now, the original had a very high cheek comb on here, on here as well, as you can see from the photographs. And the stock was uh, a relatively nice size for people who are of larger stature like myself. So it was a relatively comfortable rifle to fire. And also the sling swivel on the original rifles was on the left-hand side, where you'll see it's not on here because we have a uh, accessory rail on here. And that was something that was not offered on the standard uh, Yugoslavian military rifles. So basically, you have a rifle that uh, was a little bit unique. It had uh, some very nice fit and finish. It was very well made. And unfortunately, they were only uh, imported for a very brief period of time. Uh, they offered them both with the full stock and the underfolding stock as well. So now we got to go forward to 2004. 2004 Century Arms opened up uh, sales of some of their, what they refer to as the OPAP. Uh, the OPAP was made of military parts kits, uh, some commercial, some military parts. And those were sold for a good period of time for $550. Now, those did also have the 1.5 millimeter uh, steel instead of the standard 1 millimeter. And at those times, they were around $550. Uh, they weren't very expensive, and they were, they were certainly of decent quality. So now we get to the ZPAP. Around 2019, Zastava USA opened up and basically was a subsidiary of Zastava out of Serbia. Of course, now we're no longer Yugoslavia. Now we're Serbia. And this is the rifle. The first one they opened up was the referred to as the NPAP. The NPAP was a, a very similar rifle to what you see here. However, its major difference is that it had the one millimeter receiver instead of the 1.5 millimeter with the enlarged or bulged uh, trunnion. And it also started off life with just a, uh, a cold hammer forged barrel that was not chrome plated. The Stav Arms got a lot of uh, a lot of requests and a lot of I won't say complaints, but a lot of uh, information came back from the American market that we wanted cold hammer forged chrome line barrels. Now, chrome mining has several benefits. First off, it makes the gun much easier to clean. Two, it's two to three times harder than standard barrel steel, and it does have some properties to it that make it a little corrosion resistant as well. So, there's a lot of benefits to having a good cold hammer forged chrome barrel. They listened to the American public, and that's what they gave us. Now, that's not the military standard 
of the original rifles from the from the Yugoslavian and Serbian armies, but they answered our, our questions and they gave us the rifle that we wanted with that. Now, we're taking a look at the ZPEP. As I said, I was extremely impressed with this rifle in every which way. And I think we're going to go, through, go to it from back to front and we're going to take a look at exactly what was done here. Now, as per all AKs, we have to go through 922R compliance, which is American-made parts. So starting right at the back, we're looking at an American-made walnut stock. And we do have a, a steel butt plate on, on the back of it. The stock assembly is rather unique on here. You do have a better cheek comb on here than you had on the original ones. So the Stava US Arms offers two different types of stocks. One you have here, which is more of the brown, and they have one that's more of a, of a blonde type. The blonde type is more, uh, more military looking. Now you have a butt plate on here. You don't have the storage compartment. There's a reason for that. Because the way these stocks attach on the, on the Z-Paps and on the Yugoslavian rifles isn't from the tang on the back uh, like the standard AK. This has a very large screw in here with a bolt on it. So you pull the butt plate off, you would use a, uh, a, a ratchet uh, with a hex, hex wrench, and then you would tighten it from the inside. So that's one of the things that you would get with that. The next part we're going to take a look at is the pistol grip. This had come with an American Walnut pistol grip as well. It has a fairly good feel to it, but I sort of replaced that immediately with a standard military uh, polymer grip. Much, much more comfortable, and to me it looks a hell of a lot nicer. But this is a very nice uh, feel to it, very well made. It's not flimsy at all like some of the earlier ones that were made when uh, we first had the 922R parts kits that came out. Now we're going to look at the receiver cover. We're going to push in the, in the recoil spring for disassembly, and that's going to hold it. This is going to hold the lever in place. Now we just lift upward on the receiver cover. Now we push in, lift out. Now we pull the bolt and bolt carrier out. Now they, the Yugoslavians and the Serbians have always left the metal in the raw on the bolt and bolt carrier. So basically we have a standard bolt carrier group and a standard uh, bolt. Uh, we do have serial numbers that are matching on all components, bolts, bolt carriers, receivers. As you can see, we have a standard AK with a long stroke uh, piston, gas operated. Now looking at the trigger assembly, you'll see we basically have a standard US trigger. Again, we have to have 922R compliance, so we have a US trigger. This trigger here broke at about four pounds. Uh, very, very nice pull, uh, which you would expect of a high quality AK, which uh, this one certainly was. I'll take a little closer look right now at the receiver. Now, if we notice here, you'll see how this is bulged out. It doesn't go straight. This bulged out is the reinforcement that was designed for the RPK. And of course, when you have the, the, uh, the larger 1.5 millimeter receiver, you also have a bulged uh, re uh, larger trunnion. That trunnion also makes it much, much more durable. And you can see we have a, a, a pin in here barrel instead of a screw in barrel, so this is press fit. If you look at the rear sight, you'll see the top is left in the raw. This is another unique feature that you find with the Yugoslavian and Serbian rifles. Uh, it's very much normal, but you have a standard AK style sight. Now the next thing you want to take a look at is the accessory rail. Now the accessory rail that you see on here looks very similar to that of any standard AK. However, it's not. This is a uh, unique and it's a unique uh, pattern which you have to have a separate one made for, and which we do. This particular mount is made by Midwest Industries. And it's designed specifically for the Yugo pattern uh, type rifles. Um, this is 1913 rail. They do offer a couple of other ones as well. Um, I've used these before on other uh, on other rifles. Um, you do have a notch on here. This is something you very much want to make sure that you pay attention to is you push on the back here to release the notch to pull it out. A lot of people don't like to read the instructions and they try to pull this out and they break it. And we will be putting this on the rifle once we put it back together. But unique pattern. So if you do have one of these rifles, uh, Midwest Industries makes a great uh, mount for that. So again, you look at the handguards. As I said, we have a three slot here versus a two. It's a longer handguard. Also American Walnut. And of course the barrel, the barrel being one of the most important aspects of this rifle. You have a 16.3 inch cold hammer forged barrel. You have uh, chrome lined, as we said, one of the most important features, a one in 10 inch twist, four, four lines of groove right hand twist. Now you see the muzzle device we have on here is the standard AKM type slant muzzle brake. That's an American made part two for 922R compliance. The thread pitch that you have on here is an M14 uh, by one left hand uh, thread. And this is a concentric barrel that you would be able to put a suppressor on. This is another nice thing about having a, a very high quality barrel like this is that you don't have to worry about the concentricity issues. The front sight base is the same as you've seen on all. Uh, it's uh, very, it's got two pins on it. Uh, very, very durable. Uh, you can see we have an open slot on the back here. This open slot here is where the 
uh, on a standard military rifle where the flip up night sight would go. Uh, it was just omitted from this. You know, for the commercial rifles, uh, it's one of those things that you do have uh, tritium. You also have uh, the aluminous paint. Um, those start to die, and then, they, then the sights become useless. If you look at the original rifles that came in in 1994, um, the tritium sights are completely dead. Uh, you, can't, you can't use them. You have to try to find replacements for them. And also the luminous paint uh, gets more of a yellowish tint to it and doesn't work as well as it gets much, much older. Gas block. This is very in tune with the, uh, the original AK-47 Type 3. So looking at the sling swivel you have on here, this is a little bit different from the standard AK. The standard AKs use a, a hook uh, type, so it's a much wider uh, eyelet. This one here is set up for a, uh, a soft sling, so it's more of a, a longer, like a standard, uh, standard sling ring. So reassembly, just like that of any other AK. Now this is where it makes this uh, this button makes it much easier. This button is depressed right now, so when I insert the recoil spring, it sits in front. So now all I do is I drop that into place, drop that down. Now it's in place. Now I hit the button, pops right out, locks it in place. Talk a little bit about the magazine right now too as well. Now the original uh, rifles that were were produced by uh, Yugoslavia uh, back in the day. They wanted to have a bolt open, bolt hold open. So they had a mechanical bolt hold open, which they required a special magazine as well. Uh, they made a quick change on that to go with a uh, standard AK magazine. But the ones that they had produced offered this piece right here. What this would do is, when the rifle would fire its last shot, the bolt would stop behind this, and the bolt would uh, would would lock back. However, uh, as soon as you remove the magazine, it would uh, it would go forward. So it's not a lock open where the, where it locks in place. But it does tell you when it's empty. And that's basically the magazines that were used by the uh, Yugoslavian and Serbian armies. And uh, these do come with one of those magazines where you do have that. And these are available. However, uh, this will take any magazine. Uh, we use several different kinds of magazines in here, including uh, the standard Russian, the Yugoslavian and Serbian magazines here, P-Mags, uh, the Bulgarian waffle pattern magazines, East German. Uh, and we also used the uh, Ultimag. And we had no interchangeability issues whatsoever. So we're going to take a look more at the scope mount that you see right here. So to install, you slide over. And now we lock the scope in place. Incredibly sturdy mount between the two of them. This has adjustable tolerances on it as well. You'll see that there's a nut on the top. So you push upward and you rotate until this gets so it's snug. You want to make sure that it's, uh, it, is, it is snug and it's not going to move. The scope I chose on here was the Vortex. It was the, uh, the Viper PST, uh, 1 to 6 to 24. It was really an ideal uh, scope for the for a 762 by 39 rifle. Again, the ammunition that we used uh, primarily was the, the tool ammunition, the Wolf, and the Gecko. The Gecko is a relatively light ammunition. It has a, a lower port pressure than the other two do. So some rifles it likes, some it doesn't. This rifle it function with it 100%. Wolf is excellent, uh, higher powered ammunition. Tula tends to be a little bit lighter, uh, but the, the gas port on this thing is wide open. Uh, so it functioned uh, with everything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the range and we're going to see how it shoots.
as you see, this rifle worked flawless, everything that we put through it. I do want to make a, make a call out to our friends over at Challenge Targets. Challenge Targets was, was uh, kind enough to provide us with a couple uh, steel targets so we can change up the way we do things a little bit. So my overall impressions, I do believe this is the finest AK that's available right now. If you look at the retail price around $900, uh, you compare that to, say, the closest uh, import we have right now, which is the uh, Arsenal, which is well over $1,100. Uh, I believe you're getting a much nicer and much more durable rifle here. If you look at what uh, Arsenal puts out, you're basically looking at milled receivers. Well, if you want a milled receiver, you're looking for a much heavier rifle, uh, which is not really, really that preferable. This one here, I believe, uh, with its reinforced trunnion, uh, with the 1.5 millimeter receiver, it's just as strong, but a little bit lighter. Fit and finish, uh, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, reliability and durability, excellent what you expect out of any AK. Um, it has... Uh, Typical Yugoslavian features where you don't have some as much interchangeability like handguards. You do have to have special handguards uh, because they are longer. Uh, the stock, of course, is proprietary on it. But pretty much everything else uh, you can take and you can put in you know, your ALG triggers or you can do you know, modifications like that. You can, I'm sure there's most many companies have a lot of different kinds of rail systems so that you can accessorize them. Now, we fired probably uh, 500 rounds through. Normally, I like to fire more than that out of, uh, out, of, out, of out of rifles when I do testing. But unfortunately, with the ammunition crunch right now, it's really putting a, a hit on how much we can do uh, for reliability testing. Now, for accuracy, as you can see from the targets, you were looking at, uh, you know, typical AK were around 2 MOA. The best group was 1.8 inch MOA, and they averaged probably around 2 to 2.5. Two uh, the best uh, targets came out of this Gecko ammunition. So accuracy is there. It's a combat accurate gun. It's not a sniper rifle. It was never designed to be as such. But uh, with a scope on there, uh, you can get very, very decent accuracy. Again, I uh, looking at the different AKs that you see available right now, and even ones that were before, I think for the, for the price, uh, you are getting one hell of a deal. Uh, this is undoubtedly, in my opinion, the best that's available commercially in the market today. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.